If someone said to you, I've got an option, you can live in a country that's very convenient, has a highly developed uh, transportation system, it's democratic, it's open, it's free, there's no censorship of press, it's an open society, it's the first country in Asia that, that allowed gay marriage, people, there's fair elections, and it's a very safe and convenient, and the people are nice and the weather's great, and it's a country. Sounds great, where is it? It's Taiwan. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. As you can see, once again, we are not in my studio up in Taipei. Instead, we are down here in Kaohsiung with what might actually be the most Taiwanese foreigner here in Taiwan. You're so Taiwanese, so I barely know your English name. Robert Michael Jackson. I have to say, you look a little bit more like a Robert than a Michael Jackson. <laughs> happy, to, happy to hear that, actually. Who is Robert Michael Jackson? He's a living legend, really. He was born in England in 1989, and then I basically lived there until I was 23, and then I left. Traveled around the world a little. I went to about 40 different countries. A, a little? For the 40 different countries? Yeah. What? I just got out of control. It, it, it was like... I mean, being, being from, from England, I can see how you wanted to like literally conquer the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, we have a history like, of that. We're living so. the dream, the <laughs> colonial dream. I was, and then I ended up in Taiwan. I found Taiwan and I was like, that's it. I had some friends in Taiwan, so I came here for a holiday, stayed for about two weeks, and then went back to England. And then my dad wanted to go on a holiday, and we said, do you want to go to Taiwan? Democratic, safe country. So we came to Taiwan and my dad was like, wow, Taiwan's amazing. And we traveled in Taiwan, we went to Puli, we went camping and we went back to the airport. I said, I'll be back in two weeks. I'm going to Kanding and then I'm going to fly to Japan. I had a rail ticket for Japan, the rail pass, because I like trains. I said, I'll be back in about two weeks. And then five or six years later, I still haven't been back. All right, so, so your dad is still waiting for you to come back now? He's waiting. He always calls me every day. <laughs> no, it's not true. He's been to Taiwan like five times since oh, then. Oh, okay. So he understands. He that... comes here all the time. Okay. Before Corona, he used to come here twice a year. What happened during those two weeks then? Like what made you uh, ditch Japan and <sighs> not going back home to your dad? When I was in Puli, I met some foreigners and they said, we live in Kaohsiung, come and visit Kaohsiung. Because I'd been in Taipei and Taipei is kind of a little bit, it was a bit full on. I'm from the countryside. It was a big city and quite industrial. So I didn't like it that much. I didn't really like it. And everything's gray and dark. It's wintry. I don't know why you would live in Taipei, to be honest. You live in like a small box and it's expensive and the weather's bad. There's literally no reason to live there. So when I got to Shizu and I was like, wow, this place is beautiful. It's like this seaside feel. There's mountains, there's sea. It's very nice. It's not like Taipei at all, you know? I'm from England, so it was like 25. <laughs> never, never experienced heat before. <laughs> no, we don't experience heat. You know, we see the sun two days per year. I met some other people, they were teaching English and they said, maybe you can try teaching English here. And I thought that'd be interesting. I'd like to try teaching English. And then I moved to Dongan. Okay. Donggang, for people who don't know, is where you take the, the ferry, ferry to, to Xiaoliaoqiu. And every foreigner I met, so, well, why do you live there? I don't know why I live there, you know. The guy on the internet, he told me, I was looking for jobs, an agent introduced me. Guy on the internet? I like you, but not so famous, <laughs> please. <laughs> Permanente. The guy on the internet, he says to me, he said it's in southern Taiwan, near Kanding. Donggang is not near Kanding, though. Like two and a half hours away. For Taipei people. So he said, it's, it's, it's a seaside town. So I'm thinking like, it's California or something. Would you like to check it out? The boss wants to meet you. So I took the high speed train down to, tai, uh, down to Kaohsiung. The boss met me at the HSR station. We drove there and we got to Donggang. It was kind of dark. I couldn't really see anything. And she's like, when can you start? And I was a bit shocked. I was thought maybe there would be like an interview process or something. There was nothing. You just arrived there. She was like, no, when can you start? I was like, <laughs> Maybe the day after tomorrow? And she said, yeah. So the day after tomorrow, I came back down to Kaohsiung. She met me at the high-speed station, took me to Donggang, said, there's the books, start work. And that was it. I was like, okay, terrifying. I had to face like, I'd never taught children in my life. Children terrified me. <laughs> she helped me rent a house. And I went out that morning for a walk around to Da Pong Wan, mm -hmm. the bay there. And I was like, can I swear on this channel? Yeah, go ahead. I was like, where am I? <laughs> I've come from Taipei. I was in this big city where I could go to like the coffee shop and like walk around the city and it was, it's an international city. I was kind of sad. I was like, this is bad. And then I started studying Chinese at the Zhongshan. But then okay. I still lived in Donggang, you know, so I had to do the scooter every day from Donggang to uh, Zhongshan Dashi, which is like one hour if oh. you drive very fast, oh. which I don't recommend. <laughs> Did you like it in the end then, like Donggang? 
I, once I started going out, like I would go to Kanding every weekend and go surfing and go to the mountains in Pingdong, go hiking. So thought it was basically fun. we were saying, yeah, it's cool, but your favorite thing is leaving Donga. Yeah, and it was escaping. <laughs> When yeah. I left, I was happy. What can you even do there? Because like, as all the other foreigners, I just know about the ferry to Shadocho and the fish market. Yeah. What else? Nothing. <laughs> I was full of energy oh. at that time. But now you're a dad. I'm broken <laughs> now, yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> bro I can barely stand up in the morning, you know. Having a kid on your own now oh, gosh. as a dad. Yeah. <laughs> How did it go from like being this English conqueror of the world yeah. to now being a dad here in Taiwan? It's depressing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you, said, you said like when you, when you came here that you felt like home in Taiwan. Yeah. That's where you want to stay. Yeah. I assume that at least at that time you didn't really picture yourself starting a family. You know, I was single here and I just thought I'm wasting time. I should move back to England and stop drinking beer in 7-Elevens. Oh, but you're English. That's what we do, you know? We you have mean, to do it. And by, by, by stop drinking beer at 7-Eleven, you mean start drinking at Family Mart? Yeah, 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 more, yeah. because they have two-for-one offers. <laughs> yeah, have, obviously uh, having a child in Taiwan, I have uh, reservations or worries because obviously the education system is different, but you still have like more than 50% of a role as a father or as a mother to do things with your child. And there's might, things you might not like in England, like in England, you might worry your child's going to become a drug addict, you know, at the weekend. Mm. So in Taiwan, maybe you don't worry about that. You know, because in schools, you know, in England, oh, maybe there's a drug problem or there's people have knives or something or there's, there's dangers. So there's, there's good and bad to it. But I, I think the, the main point is as a father or a mother, you're still going to have the biggest effect on your child. Might he's going to well. be a YouTuber soon, Patrick, you know. Oh, yeah. Right, he's got to earn some money somehow. He doesn't have a channel already. I'm going to make one for him. Yeah. He's got to make money. You have know? had two months. Speaking about forming your son into becoming a YouTuber. Yeah. Uh, you are a YouTuber. Yeah. Into one. Yeah. Kind of. But that was sort of the long-term plan because I always wanted to do a YouTube and do something sort of theatrical or creative uh, in the sort of sphere of performance. So I thought, okay, first face your fear and maybe try teaching and overcome that fear. Actually, it took me about two years to become comfortable talking in front of a class. And then I thought the next step is you've got to learn Chinese and learn it to a level where you're proficient in Chinese. And then I thought, okay, start making a YouTube channel. So I started doing that last year. More questions about YouTube later, but you brought up Chinese now. I, yeah. I think like your Chinese is like amazing. Oh, so in so. You also speak Taiwanese. I used to because I lived in Donggang. So I went to Donggang and everyone's, oh, oh, I've got to start to learn Taiwanese. I thought they spoke Chinese and I went to the market and everyone's like, oh, and, uh, and they're speaking, and they're speaking Taiwanese. So I'm like, what are they doing here? They don't even speak Chinese. It's completely different. So I used to go to the market okay, to watch disclaimer, them. you could have said anything. I wouldn't have understood. It's just, it, num it's just numbers. So I used to go, there's a guy like selling stuff in their traditional Taiwanese market. And so I went there to like listen to what they're saying to practice. So some of it I learned from books and then some of it I learned on the streets. I really want to make a YouTube channel. I've been watching not Taiwanese YouTubers, but other YouTubers from around the world. I thought I'd really want to do that. Yeah, if I'd known how much work it takes, I wouldn't have started, you know. <laughs> I'm a creative person, like I like drawing and things like that. Oh, really? Yeah, so um, I want to create something. You don't really strike me as like the drawing kind of yeah, I know giant I look, English hooligan yeah, with hooligan. Like tattoos I know, all I, over your body. I know like I look ghetto, but if one of the things that you like about Taiwan is like the people are just like so friendly and like yeah. they're so nice. Yeah. Are they still friendly to someone that looks like you? I've never experienced any negativity in uh, Taiwan or any sort of uncomfortable situations. I mean, they're quite friendly, Taiwanese people. Yeah, 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 yeah. For, sure, for sure. But yeah. I mean, they're, they're friendly to me, but I also don't have like a sword tattoo on my... That's throat. true. That's, they usually ask me. They're like, oh, I need to sing number door. I was like, yeah. Alan got one. Alan got a Taiwan oh, tattoo. Has, every time he gets drunk, I feel like I get a new tattoo. Nutter. Nutter. <laughs> English people. <laughs> Nutters. You've been in Taiwan for five years. Will you still be in Taiwan five years from now? Probably. So the plan is to like stay here. Taiwan's for... great, isn't it? Yeah. Ta I, I, so. I mean, because could... for, for me, it's like I have been here for 10 years. Yeah, that's too long. But, <laughs> you know, but you I have that. always only added one year at a time. Yeah. So if, if someone would, during any time I've been here, if anyone would have said, will you be in Taiwan two years from now? I would have said no. Yeah. Because my plan was always only one year. But you already have like a five year plan of staying here or like most likely you will stay. 
If someone said to you, I've got an option, you can live in a country that's very convenient, has a highly developed uh, transportation system, it's democratic, it's open, it's free, there's no censorship of press, it's an open society, it's the first country in Asia that, that allowed gay marriage, people, there's fair elections, and it's a very safe and convenient, and the people are nice and the weather's great, and it's a country. Sounds great, where is it? It's Taiwan. The weirdest question I get, you know, I tell people like, oh, how long have you been in Taiwan? I lived here for 10 years. Yeah. Do you like Taiwan? Yeah. And I'm like, no one is forcing me to yeah, live I here. I would have left know? here if I exactly. didn't. Exactly. Yeah. If I didn't like it, we would, we would have left. Yeah. With that said, is there anything that you feel you haven't liked or have taken you longer time to get used to? If you come here with your own views and ideals and you still want to live by them in Taiwan, you will have a difficult life and you'll probably be drunk every day because it will be too painful to deal with. I don't fully agree with that. You know, I don't think you should drive through red lights, but... This is a Gaoshan thing though. This is a Gaoshan thing. Never happens in Taipei. No, no, but this is a terrible place. And I think you learn this from traveling. You just have to learn to accept mm. that things are different and things are not how you expect them to be. And the world isn't always how you wish it to be or how you think it should be. So if you come here, I would say that you should be willing to change, change your views about things and learn to accept things as they are and not say, oh, I don't like this, or this is bad, or this is bad and just learn to accept things and learn the language where is your uh, youtube channel five years from now in the gutter <laughs> no, no i'm joking i hope to get more people on my channel and do more collaborations with uh, superstars like yourself i would like to do when the time permits um some more traveling videos i like to do traveling and taiwan's beautiful and it's convenient so it really suits the traveling stuff food videos i love to eat food so you can expect to see more food videos and maybe some family stuff but not too much family stuff he's gonna have his own channel he's anyway, gonna have so his own one so he, yeah he can do his own thing you think it's a lot of work now. Just wait until you become a full-time YouTuber. Wait until you become it's... a full-time dad. Oh, okay, fair oh. enough. You win. you win. Is there any place in Taiwan that you haven't been yet that you want to go and record a video for? Or is there anything else on your, like anything specifics on your YouTube bucket list? Jofen. Jofen. I've never been there. Never been to Jofen? I've been everywhere in Taiwan. I've never, never been, been to I've like... been everywhere. I've been Yilan, Taidong, Hualien, Taizong. Everywhere. I've never been there. Never been to Jofen. I've never been there. Never been to Reifang, Tipar Mountain? No. That place I've been to. Yeah, the place where you make cups, where you can do pottery. Inga, it's totally wrong direction from Taipei. No, I've never been there. <laughs> I've never been there. Okay, well, in that case, if you do ever decide to leave this paradise of Kaohsiung, as yeah. you say. Prozzi wants to move to Kaohsiung. Prozzi is not really known for making the best choices here in life. That's true. <laughs> it will be my honor to be your, your Jofen Teapot Mountain guide. We're gonna go there. If you, if you ever come up. And if you also want to jump on board and to watch that future video that we will make together, then please do make sure to subscribe to this channel and to hit that bell so you get notified. And of course, please, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to Da Feng Da Ge Da YouTube channel as well. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with L as in like. Ends with S. Subscribe. Engstrom. 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 Sorry to interrupt. Now you now I have to start over again. Yeah. <laughs> Please to both and see you all in the next one.